Hi everybody, this is Julie. Now, much as I hate to break the fourth wall like this, I do have to make a note real quick for everybody. Now, um, there's a piece of information that I understand has been causing a lot of confusion throughout the Dead Eye Kid, and I'm just going to state, make a statement right now to clarify, because otherwise there's chunks of stuff in this story that are not going to quite make sense. So, just so you know, throughout the stories to date, Clarence Fanshawe is referred to as male. Thanks. Bye. No gunshots herald his approach. No trademark left behind him when he leaves. The kid has had his fill of notoriety in days gone by, and plenty of empty boots can surely testify. Some say he travels alone. That's the dead eye kid. Old Lang Syne, Episode 1. Largest town I've been near in a good passel of time. I hear tell it started out as a frontier fort, but the frontier mostly west and left it a setting behind. Will it be safe? Safe? I had rather assumed you were avoiding larger towns for uh, neutrality's sake. Meaning I don't want to be invited to a necktie party? That's part of it, though I'm pretty sure I ain't never been posted in this territory. Is it worth the risk? Time to time, a man wants a bath and a night in the bed. There are some distinct benefits to being deceased. <laughs> yep. I don't gotta listen to you belly aching about aches and pains and sleeping on the ground no more. Never mind being all prissy and citified about finding you a comfortable bush now and then. Yes, yes. Besides, I'm out of coffee. And low on shows. Heavens, how do you manage? A lot of trade hereabouts. Reckon I'll be able to get what all I need. Them, soldiers. Right, we'll go on over yonder. There'll still be a fort within spitting distance. I did notice that the old fortification appears to have become the mansion for an authority of some kind. It's probably best to get my business done and skedaddle. I say, isn't it a bit early for a drink? Three weeks. Don't seem early to me. I'll... Clary? Oh, God. Clary? I'd know that voice anywhere. Friend of yours? Old acquaintance. Go, go on ahead. Right. One here. There you go. Them you old Roberts. <laughs> <coughs> Something wrong, fella? Toothache. Hit like a sneak bite. You look at me, pissant slab of gun leather. Oh, nice. You need a yonked? Barber can. No, no. I can handle it. Another, and sorry about the. Ain't hey, no, never mind. Give me the bottle. <laughs> now I found you. Y'all could float up a heap of rock gut and it won't never drown me. You drink more careful now, you hear? Yep. Oh, good lord, look at you. Mustache and all. Aren't you a little brigadier? Carmichael. Oh, how formal. Just like at school. What have you been up to, Clary, dear? Fanshawe, if you please. And we used to be such chums. However did you end up here? I'm quite sorry to see that you are dead, Carmichael. Oh, I rather doubt that. You're only very sad to see that I'm here, aren't you? Would you prefer that I said that I am pleased to find that you had died, since that would be the only circumstance that could ever have stopped you from tormenting every living soul around you? At least that would be closer to the truth. Jolly good. Happy you're dead. Must get along. Don't run off so quickly, Clary. <sighs> There's been no one interesting to talk to or listen in on for simply ages. How unfortunate. Must rush. I noticed you speaking to that fellow. Bloody hell. I speak to a lot of people. I'm sure. But he replied. Might I speak with him as well? I... Oh, just watch your face. You're trying desperately to come up with a lie. You never could hide anything from me, moustache or no moustache. Silly Clary. Stop calling me that. Oh, how I've missed these little moments with my dearest friends ever since I made the leap. 
I shall have to spend a great deal of time with you and with your rugged looking friend. Jolly good. I know you can hear me, you toad belly worm. Sit. What makes y'all think I'd sit with you? Y'all done went and killed me. That's one reason I'm plumb surprised to see you. You went down all the way to Fayetteville, damn far north of here. I drifted. That's just what got me hornswoggled. Ain't no one drifts. Well, I did. And I was planning to get y'all back for what you done. One way or another. <sighs> Why'd you drag me out to the slaughterhouse? That woman. Ghost woman. An old flame? Nonsense! We knew each other as children. She is... she is unlikely to follow us here. Spec not. Women folks ain't fond of this sort of messy business. Yes. So? You'd best have brought me here for a reason. Lisette Carmichael. Lisette Carmichael. She is a person who likes to know things. About other people. She likes to... Hold a grudge? Like a noose over your head? Aptly put, yes. You can't have much in the way of dark secrets, though, can you? These ways, not no more. You might be surprised. Who's she gonna tell? Oh. And while I'm fairly certain you think you could overlook any past indiscretion on my part, I don't doubt that there are a few things that might shock even you. Lord knows, she's not even above the occasional fabrication. Did it involve a sheep? What? Whatever it was you done. No! It isn't... It's not like that at all. Sounds like we should just ride on out. What? Got my coffee. Ain't no reason to lollygag. You would leave? O over this? I figure you saved my life more than once, and ain't much I can do in return. Let's get gone before you start a-thanking me. You distract her. I'll get the gear. Come and find me when you feel the pull. Righty ho. Run the way, eh? <laughs> All us New Y'all's yeller. You're lucky ain't no one about but us. Otherwise, I wouldn't dignify none of that with an answer. Y'all killed me. We had it out, fair and square. I never shot no one in. I never didn't kill anyone, not a gunnin for me. Not on purpose. Are y'all saying I was asking for it? I seem to recall you a calling me out in the middle of a fairish game of cards, yelling blue bloody murder that I should step out and face you. Well, y yeah, but I was drunk. I didn't do that to you neither. You called me out with no good reason again. I, I, I fancied making a name for myself. <laughs> By shooting the kid? You ain't the first. But y'all still killed me. And I won't forget none of it. But you got what you asked for, and not a jot more. Blame Providence if you can't blame yourself, but don't put this guilt on me. Yeehaw! Lisette, there you are, just like a naughty boy, running off to filthy places to get away. So sorry, didn't have much choice. My friend is quite fascinated by... hogs. Did you make a clean breast of it? Or just warn him not to believe a thing I say? You don't understand what you're threatening to do. So bothered over trifles. How much people change. Ruining someone's life never meant anything to you. Do you recall poor Selfridge? Carmilla served her right. She threw herself off a bridge. She also let herself be compromised. I didn't put her in the family way, and she was the one lying and hiding. Are you trying to imply that you are somehow in the right? A champion of truth. Shall I point out what it is you are doing that flies in the face of nature? History is replete with... Oh, spare me. Next I'll be quoting Shakespeare. Very well. I shan't try to justify myself, but I will point out that whatever I'm doing, it cannot be changed. Being dead, there's not much one can do about such trifles. Then why should it be such a catastrophe were I to tell? You've, you've never had a real friend. Only people who fawned on you in order that you should not reveal their shortcomings. I? You? Kindly allow me to finish. There is a certain camaraderie among men that simply does not, cannot occur once a woman is involved. 
Once you put your nose in, I fear it would never be quite the same. No doubt. I'll just go and find your friend now, shall I? <laughs> no, but I think I shall. The lonely cowboy cliché. Always riding out, heading yonder. Join us again in two weeks when he rides back over that far horizon. The Dead Eye Kid was written and produced by Julie Hoberson. Lego Roberts, the Dead Eye Kid, is J. Spider Isaacson. Fanshawe was J. Hoberson. In Old Lang Syne, Lizette Carmichael was Robin Keyes. Grissom was Bill Hallweg of Broken Sea Audio. Commander Hoyt Bennington was Glenn Hallstrom. Scotty was Mike Campbell. Also heard in this episode, Rick Lewis is the bartender. Cover art is courtesy of Brett Colstock. Did I Kid opening theme music was for the wreck of the old 97 from a public domain recording from 1924 found on the Internet Archive. That's at archive.org. I'm your announcer, Old Hoss, also known as Glenn Hallstrom. Any other incidental music was by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. Sound effects were found on SoundSnap.com, Sonomic.com, and OneSoundFX.com. Sound and mastering was done by Julie Hoverson. All persons, places, critters, and events in the story were fictitious or used in a fictitious manner that are not meant to reflect any persons, places, or things, living, dead, or otherwise. Mosey on down to our website at www.thedeadeyekid.com. This presentation is copyright 2010 to Julie Hoverson and Reality Productions. We all expect you to come back now here. <laughs>